today is our first ever open house event and really it's just our way to tell the freshmen like hey this is an opportunity for you we have a great gaming community just for you we have a bunch of machines that you can use consoles and you could compete for scholarships there's all these things that we offer these new students and we want them to know that this is on campus for them now, we were the first school in New Mexico history to offer an eSports scholarship to students. And some of those recipients are here today. We have 24 machines right now, all operational for our students. We officially have one console, finally. <laughs> We've been working so hard for that one, but we're looking to expand on the room. <laughs> League of Legends, Overwatch, Valorant, Rainbow Six Siege, pretty much every game under the sun. We do all the popular games. We just brought on chess and Chess is gonna be competing for a $50,000 scholarship this year. We're live streaming the event on Twitch. So something we like to do is we, we wanna show off the production we got off, all of the skills we put to use. Esports is this bubble that so many things apply to. So if you're a student, all you gotta do is join our Discord. We give you a link to become a member. You can come to college, you could compete for esports and get a degree and get a degree in something you're passionate about and a job you wanna do later on. Uh, yesterday, the Riedoso area broke two fires. We have McBride Fire and the Nogal Canyon Fire. The McBride Fire, it quickly spread. It um, started to move into some residential neighborhoods, and unfortunately right now we are confirming that we have 150 structures lost or damaged. It started with wind, and then we started smelling smoke in our classroom, and then we got a shelter in place. And then it was sort of freaking out because some kids were like really emotional, you know. Right. And I was just like, is my dad okay? Is my dog okay? I mean, because we live very close to the fire. The fire got within a quarter mile of our house. So, yeah. And we could see some houses burning as we were on the bus ride. So It was quite overwhelming, to be honest. Um, especially being that there's so many people that live on this little tiny road. I think what's hard right now is... You have three classifications of people and the, one of them can't leave and their house is gone. So that's the worst kind of class and anyone can help out. Just talk to the Red Cross and they'll be happy to accept any help that they can. I've been a Red Cross volunteer for 13 years and every disaster is very different, but the people are the same. If they need help, it just you step up and try and resolve, you know, help provide them with their needs. As long as people don't have a place to stay, we'll be here. Abraham is like a brother to me, and it's like losing family, so I'm here to let him, you know, rest in peace now. Hundreds of people showed up at the vigil today to pay tribute to Oregon Mountain senior linebacker Abraham Romero who passed away yesterday after being in a three-week coma due to being seriously injured during a game against Deming. Some people I spoke to today at the vigil say they showed up to pay tribute to Romero and to support his family. My heart is broken for Abe's mom and family and as well as the Knight family. I feel really bad for the family, how they lost him. I have a few friends here that I went to school with and they said they knew him really well and he was a big supporter on the football team. While it is heartbreaking for Romero's loved ones to gather due to him passing away, they also shared stories of Romero at the vigil to remember him for who he was. I'm going to snap this ball over you every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that everybody joins together and help, helps everyone remember Abraham the way he would have wanted us to. A leader, a captain, an amazing person, wholesome person with a big heart. Sitting in a chair in this corner, and she was sitting right here in front of the window and uh, playing the keyboards, practicing the music for tomorrow, and all of a sudden, the wall crashed in. I didn't really feel anything except I know, I know I'm going to get hit, and then I was okay, so, and, and all I could do was thank God for, <laughs> for protecting me. The Las Cruces Police Department responded to a shots fired call near the intersection of El Paseo and University Avenue yesterday. 
Detectives say the incident involved a car crashing a 30-year-old man who was taken to the hospital with non-threatening gunshot wounds. My wife was sitting right there. Oh my God. I spoke with Julie Baker, who was sitting right here next to her husband with her back facing the wall. This part of the truck came right through the window and the wall, and I was just sitting there waiting to, to be hit and all the debris went flying past me, glass broken, sheetrock, and I sat there unharmed. Shortly after the crash, the Bakers tell me they heard gunshots and sheltered into place. Julie Baker tells me she made it out with just minor cuts to her leg caused by shattered glass. It's a, truly a miracle. Despite the incident, the Cross of Christ Lutheran Church held service this morning in a nearby building. We just know that as the church, as the people, we're going to keep gathering around God's word and then we're going to keep going out into our community and sharing it. Before we go to that, I want to give you some perspective as to just how high this mud really is and how far my boots are sunken into it. It's almost clay-like if you feel it. It's just really, really thick mud. There are still several migrants out here after being dropped off. Over the past weeks, hundreds of migrants have been released into the streets due to federal processing centers reaching capacity limits. Take a look behind me. You can see these vehicles right here. These people are trying to dig out their vehicles from being sunken into the mud. I spoke with the woman whose mom lives in this house right behind me. She's a 93 year old woman. They tell me that there's even water flooded inside this woman's home. And this is the first time that they're dealing with severe flooding like this. It's happened multiple times before. I'm here outside the home where deputies say they exchanged gunfire with Robert Yacone after they found his wife Kimberly Yacone dead in their master bedroom. Romero's friends and family left several candles here for him him and they really want the community to remember him as a leader and an amazing friend. Reporting live in Las Cruces, Karin Sanchez, Key Fox 14, News at 9. And it's a problem that they say they want fixed. I now want to go ahead and show you the streets. My photographer is going to turn the camera. You can see these streets are just completely flooded with water. And if you take a look right here, my photographer is going to zoom into a barrier that the people in this neighborhood came together to help build this morning to stop the water from flowing any more into this street where this house is. We lost cruises in Hatch. Along this county road, hunters found the remains of a young girl in 1985. To kind of show you exactly what it looks like and the conditions that these people are having to deal with this Friday morning. Not a good place to be and it is definitely not safe. Like According to Border Patrol, 932 migrants have been released into the streets of El Paso since Wednesday. City leader